All right, so we'll get here. Let's see where I was at here. So as you get some of this stuff done, okay, so this is nine. That plugged in, make sure I plugged it in. I'm trying to make sure I see it right. Okay, and so you can move the 70 over, which would be what, 117 plus 21x over 2. You can multiply everything by 2 if you wanted to, which would give me 18x um, plus 21x is equal to 117 and 2, 234. Okay, and then this would be add that up. That's 39x is equal to 234, and divide by 39. Your answer is 6. Okay, which if you look at your directions, if once you get a value, if it's multiple choice, the nice part is you know your x value has to be 6. Okay, If it's not multiple choice and you're having to find the whole point, you plug the 6 back into something like this and you'll get 1 as your other value. Okay, So that would get you that value. Okay. Alright, so any Oops. Any questions? Let me get you all unmuted here. Any questions so far? Everybody's good? And that's real good Algebra 1 stuff anyway, right? So we should be pretty much good on some of that. The biggest difference between Algebra 1 and the College Algebra stuff is pretty much how to write if the equation is written properly, you know, if it's the same. Uh, if it's the same line, how you write it, because we don't do that in Fort Bend ISD. This is more of a college thing. Okay, so that's kind of how we want to deal with that. Okay, same thing with this one. You can use any method you want. Okay, now I haven't used the addition method. If you again, if you remember your addition method, you want to get everything in the same, uh, both of them in standard form, which would be this would be I believe 3x plus 4y is equal to 0 and then you would have to do some distribution uh, where's my somebody's wanting in okay uh, this would be 5x plus 5y so the negative twos would cancel each other out the 4y would come over which would just give me 5x plus y is equal to 0 Okay, so if we multiply this side by, if you want to do a negative 4, we have 3x plus 4y is equal to 0, and this would be negative 20x minus 4y is equal to 0. This would be what, negative 17x is equal to 0, x is 0. And then when you plug that back in, you get zero zero. Okay, so you got both methods that you can deal with. Okay, so that um, you can use either method you want either time on the test as long as I see some work somewhere at, uh, that you have. Now, this next one is the matrix, and this y'all all did in algebra two, at least for some part of it. Okay. Being able to take an augmented matrix, and what it means by an augmented matrix, it has this line here. Okay, so this is an augmented matrix turned into the uh, system, and if there's a, if this is a three by three, it has to have three equations and three variables, and you're just playing match up anyway. And the one that matches up here is here. Okay, this would be probably one of the questions that you're you're not going to be able to show a whole lot of work. Okay. Um, in terms, you know, I probably won't check much of your work on something like this when it comes to your submitted paperwork for your test. Okay, so that, you know, I, I understand that one. Okay, and so this is the only one that matches up. These are your x's, these are your y's, these are your z's, 
equal to these guys. Okay, and notice your signs. Okay, if it has a negative in front of it, it's a minus sign. Okay, or a negative on this side. Don't forget your equal sign. Okay, if there is a zero in here, okay, then you can leave out that variable. Okay, but they should match up. I don't think you have too much issues with that. Okay, but as you get into some of these other matrix, this one is asking you to use the row transformation, okay, the row operations, okay, and so all we're asking you to do is take this augment it, and you're gonna ch you're trying to find the one that you end up after you do this row this rule, and what this wants you to do is take this is row one, so they want you to do negative five times row one, so row one is this one here. Okay, so they want you to multiply all those by negative 5. So that would give you negative 5, uh, negative 80, negative 25, and negative 15. And then add row 3 to that. And this is row 3 down here. 5, 12, 9, and 13. And then you're supposed to add those up. 0. Uh, negative 68, negative 16, and looks like negative 2. And that needs to go back into row 3. So this needs to be in your row 3. And so that's the, this is the only one that has this in row 3. Everything else stays the original. So there is my answer. Okay, And you can show a little bit of that work. Okay, In fact, the calculator is not going to help you with that anyway, even though you're not supposed to use a calculator. Okay, um, and then this one, and I'll unmute you after this one to see if anybody has any questions. But here you have two equal matrix. Okay, they want you to find the values of x, y, and z. If for these to be equal, they have to be the same side. Check, and then their elements corresponding are equal. Okay, so if this is negative two and y is in its same spot, that means y here has to be negative 2, x would have to be 3, and z would have to be 8. And then all we're asking you to do is find the value of 3 times x plus 2 times y plus z. So you got to just multiply the x by 3, that's 9, 2 by y, which is negative 4, and z. You're going to add all those up which would be 5 plus 8 is 13, which is 13 there. Okay. Now, we may ask you to uh, find the sum, the product of certain numbers, multiply something and then find the product or the difference, or give you like right here, like we gave you the little operation right here. Okay. So you have those that you have to just make sure you are aware of your uh, directions. Okay, so any questions so far with those guys? Yeah, yeah, the only one that, that we've done so far that you really wouldn't have any work on is something like this, where you're matching up equations with the matrix. Yeah, good. Um, no, uh, technically, I mean, it's still going to be kind of graded as a point. Technically, there, there's a main reason I'm having you do this <laughs> is because I want to see people doing some work. That makes sense? Um, now, if I, if, if I see something that's like very, oh, why'd you do that on the last step and get that answer, then, yeah, I might go back in and try and find some point for you or something if it's a big drastic thing. Okay. A lot of the point, a lot of the questions, the questions, you know, they're 20, it's 21 questions, so it's either going to be, I think, four or five points a piece. Okay, there might be one, I think, even less than that. So um, it probably wouldn't be a whole lot of points I give you, but I think it'll probably be okay. If you if you're doing the work, you're probably going to pretty much get the right answer because it's still a lot of multiple choice pieces. But I can go look at it, especially if I think you need to get the Fair enough. All right, so...
And there, there's a couple that I might have to go in and double check on some of y'all's. So I w wouldn't be surprised. All right, so let's kind of go into these. These are some operations. And again, um, these are all ones that you can actually do without a calculator. And I will almost guarantee you, if you do the operation itself without the cal you're not supposed to be using calculator, remember. Um, but you probably do this faster by hand than you would actually by calculator. Okay, this one's actually asking you to take 2 times B, which is this one here, which means when I multiply a matrix by an, a scalar, all the numbers get multiplied by t that value, and then you're going to subtract A. So if I'm going to go 2B here, 2B would multiply everything by 2, so this would be negative 14, negative 10, 14, 12, negative 8, and 12, and then you're going to subtract A to, from that. And if you show me at least this much, and you get your answer, I'm, you know that that's going to be plenty. I want to see at least a little bit of that. Okay, you don't want to do this by hand in a lot of this in your head anyway. You're subtracting now. Remember, to subtract, they have to be the exact same size. These are both three by twos, so they are the same size. You can subtract them. Okay, so you have negative 14 minus two, which would give you a negative 16. Okay, and then 12 minus the 6, which would be 6. Negative uh, 10 minus the 4 would be negative 14. Negative 8 minus the 4, watch your signs, negative 12. Uh, 14 minus 2 is 12, and then 12 minus negative 7 is 19. Okay, so that gives you your answer down here. Okay. Um, now, this one, okay, multiplying. Now, by hand, okay, and this is one of those questions I'm going to be able to tell if you use a calculator or not. Um, because this takes a few steps to actually multiply. Okay? Um, and they are expecting you to be able to multiply something like this on your final. At least they have the last couple years. Okay? To multiply A times B... Okay, first and foremost, this is a 2 by 2 and this is a 2 by 2. The inside of those numbers, those two numbers there, if I want to do A times B, have to match, and they do. Okay, so these can multiply together. Okay, and the size will be a 2 by 2, which is the outer two numbers. And if you watched my videos, this is kind of what I did. It's going to be a 2 by 2. There's a 2 and a 2 okay so it's going to be that size okay and what I tried to do is show you okay here's my answer going to be you're going to take this row times this column it's going to be the 2 times the 6 which is 12 negative 1 times the 1 which is negative 1 and you're going to add them together okay which 12 plus a negative 1 is 11. Okay? Then you're going to take this row, first row, okay, times the second column. Okay? And so that's going to give you your 2 times 2 is 4. Okay? And this one. Well, actually, probably should do it in this order. This row times this column is really the order you're supposed to do it. You can do it in a couple different orders. It's 6 times 6, which is 36. 5 times 1, which is 5. And you add those up, and that's 41. And really, you're going to be able to start finding all your answers, especially if, it's multiple, if we give it to you as multiple choice. Now you're going to take this row times the second column, which is the 2 times 2 plus the one, negative 1 times 6. That's 4 plus a negative 6, which would be negative 2. And then finally, this row times, or this row, sorry, times this column, which would be the 6 times the 2 plus the 5 times the 6. 30 and 12 is 42. And it gives you this one here. Okay.
And we kept it at a basic, two, you know, and this one's a nice little 2x2, two two, which uh, you should be able to handle most of those 2x2s. Two they don't take too long to do. Okay. So we should be able to see some of that. You put that in a calculator. I know you're using a calculator, and you will have signed an oath saying that you're not going to be using a calculator. Okay. Um, now, Gaussian method. Okay. Um, they are asking you to be able to do a problem using Gaussian method. Okay. Um, either uh, Gaussian or Gauss Jordan, and it doesn't matter which one they basically. But so you're going to have to show this, and again, they're asking you. And I know they've had one of these in the past on their finals. You're going to write your uh, coefficients, and then here's negative three and seven. And this is a two by two. So your goal, remember, is to get something with a one, one, and a zero here. Okay, if you can get that far, life will be actually fairly decent. Okay. Um, now in this one you've got a this one is kind of tricky this one takes a little bit more time because it's a review question and I don't think we made them quite as tough on the test for you um, just because you have a little bit limited time but you would want your first step here would probably be to uh, multiply this row by one-fifth row one by one-fifth and why do you want to do that is because you want this to be a one That'll give you a 1, negative 7 fifths, negative 3 fifths. Okay. Now, at this point, you need to make this a 0. Okay. So to make this one a 0, you would actually multiply the top row by 6 and add it to row 2 and put it back into row 2. All right, so to do that, this would be a 6, negative 42 over 5, and negative 18 over 5. And this would be a negative 6, a 5, and a 7. Okay, now to add that, that's the nice part. That's going to be a 0. Okay, this is going to be negative 42 fifths plus 25 fifths which would be what negative 17 fifths and I haven't done this problem before and then this one's going to be negative 18 fifths plus 35 fifths which would be a 17 fifths that's nice okay so now my new row this would be 1 negative 7 fifths negative 3 fifths and this is going to be 0 negative 17 fifths and 17 fifths now you want to make that a 1 okay easiest way to make it a 1 multiply by its reciprocal so we're going to take row 2 and we're going to multiply by a negative 5 seventeenths okay now what that's going to do okay is that's going to give me a 0, 1, and a negative 1. And that's going to be good enough for you to start solving because you now know that y has to be negative 1. And once you know y is negative 1, because this is a y value right here, so y is negative 1, I can plug this into any of these equations. Okay, I wouldn't bother with this. I'd go back up here, and I would do 5x minus 7 times negative 1 is equal to negative 3. Solve for x. Hmm. Anybody? S I'm trying to see where I made a mistake at. I think there's a mistake in here somewhere. That's a 7. 
Oh wait, no. I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I was adding wrong. This would be negative 10. So this means x is going to be negative 2. Sorry about that. I was thinking that was a negative 7 there for a second. All right. So x is negative 2. Y is negative 1, which means my aunt the the place these cross is going to be at negative 2, negative 1. Okay. And so when you add those up, because this is actually asking you to find the sum, that's why you get your negative 3. Okay. So. All right. So let me do this real quick. All right. So now I do know some of this is a little more different for you know those of you who had pre-AP y'all did a lot more of this in, in Algebra 2 okay your goal again and if, if this one struggles you I did these kind of if you watch the videos that I posted I took these at a lot slower pace okay in fact and the fractions may be freaking you, you guys out a little bit with these okay the ones I did on the notes Okay, there really weren't any fractions that we dealt with, so it makes a little bit more sense. So just, I would make sure you go back and look at those from, I think it's 6.1. Okay, because it will help you a whole lot more than this, just this one problem. Okay. Um, so the only other one here that's a little bit, different let's do these here okay is this one here in which because this already tells you the answer as you do this problem depends on how you deal with it okay some people might want to do addition method with this which is fine you need to put everything to one side with the constants on the other side okay and you could multiply this by three which would give you, and this is a method you all used in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. So it shouldn't be a big deal when you get to these problems. But when these cancel, and you get 0 is equal to negative 6, anytime you get a false statement, okay, that is going to be an inconsistent or no solution, which gives you this. Okay, remember, and I didn't type this one again this should be it's kind of in a different form but um, just kind of depends on the teacher as they do them like this one here you might see this one as an answer wise this is when they're the same line so these would have came out true again if you used addition method you might see this as a form some teachers will write it like this okay but as long as you see this, and we put this here, depending on if you see that, you know they have to be the same line. However, different teachers teach it different ways. In fact, books teach it differently. Okay? So just remember, if it's written like this, that means they're the same line. This would mean they parallel. And if they give you points, that means they cross. Okay? So as you see your possible answers, or you're answering them. Those are kind of what you want to deal with them. Okay? All right, so let's hit these guys here because these next page here on my paper, but these next problems on your review are actually going to make you have to do things that are not both linear anymore. Okay, this is quadratic and this is linear. Okay, so they want you to find where they cross and it says find the sum of the squares of the solution. Okay, and we'll talk about how to answer that in a second. But how do I deal with this? Okay. Well, you can do substitution, okay? And the easiest way to substitute this is negative 2x plus 5 is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9. Set them equal to each other. And in this case, you'd have to get everything to one side, which would give you add 2x to this side would be 4x. Subtract that would be 4. And then factor, and you're going to get two values for x. Okay, but they happen to be the same. Okay, x is going to be 2. 
Okay. Now, how do I find the y value? Okay. And because they're both the same, that just means I'm going to have a parabola and it crosses. They're going to touch in one place, wherever that might be. Okay. So now we're going to find the 2, plug it back in. So y is going to be negative 2 times 2 plus 5, or y is going to be 1. Okay. So this actually crosses at 2, 1. Now if they ask you where it crosses, that's your answer. Okay. But in this case, they say find the sum of the squares of the solution, which means they want you to take the x value, square it, take the y value, square it, and then add them up. So this would be 4 plus 1, which is 5, and that's why this is my answer. Okay, so you can't just find the solution. You also have to answer the question. And, you need, and those are all terms you should be able to deal with. Okay, this one, same idea, except it says find the sum of the x-coordinates of the solution. Okay, now, that's only written because of the way this answer happens. Okay, if I set these equal to each other. Oops, that's a minus 9. Okay, and I move everything over. This is going to be 2x squared minus 8x plus 9. That's going to be a plus 6. I would multiply everything by half or divide everything by 2 just to make life easy. You're going to factor it. Now, in this case, I get x, uh, let's see here, minus 3, x minus 1, which means I get two values for x, 3 and 1. Now, this is two quadratics. One opens up, one opens down, which means they're going to have probably a good chance of having two solutions. And this one does. It has an x value of 3 and it has an x value of 1. You need to find their y values. Okay? Technically, you would normally want to find your y values. But if you read your directions, you can save yourself some test time and read your direction first, and it says find the sum of the x coordinates. Well, I already know the two x coordinates. The two x coordinates, okay, are 3 and 1 which means find the sum of those two, which is 3 plus 1, which is 4, and that's why it's 4. Okay. If the question asks you to find the actual solutions, you got to plug that back in. I'd plug it into this one. It's a little easier. It would be 9 minus 6 minus 3, which would be 9 minus 6 is 3, minus 3 is 0, so the first one's at 3, 0, and then 1 minus 2 minus 3, which would be negative 1, negative 4. And those are the two solutions. Okay, depending on what the question asks. So make sure you're aware of those things and not, you know, don't do more work than you have to. Okay? If, even if you were showing me the work and that you stopped there and you went, okay, I'm going to find the solution to that, I'd take that because that, that's smart work. Okay? Um, and so here, there is going to be a word problem or two, okay? It says an electronic sign for a grocery store has the shape of a rectangle, okay? Its perimeter is 72 feet, and its area, there's a typo there, area is 320 feet. Now, it says find the length of the longer side of the rectangle. So what we're going to have to do is, if you remember air, perimeter of a rectangle, 2L plus 2W is equal to 72. That's perimeter. And area of a rectangle is length times width is 320. Okay? And you're going to have to find a method to deal with this. Okay? In my notes that I did give you, okay, one of the methods could be solved for L or W here. You could say L is 320 over W. Then plug it back into L. So 2 times 320 over w plus 2w is equal to 72. It doesn't matter which, however you do it. You're, you're going to end up with the same answers. Okay. So this would be 640w 
plus 2w is equal to 72. I would go ahead and multiply everything by w to get rid of the fraction. And notice that builds all of a sudden a quadratic. Okay, so what you want to do with that quadratic, get everything to one side. And that's equal to zero. I divide everything by two. And then you're factoring. Okay, or however you want to solve it. This will factor. Okay. In fact, you're going to get W minus and W minus, and you're looking for values of 320. So that's 2 and what, 160. That won't work. Uh, 3 won't work. 4 and 80. That's not going to work. 5 and 64. Getting closer. 6 not going to work, 7 is not going to work, 8 and 40. Do, 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 what am I missing here? 9 is not going to work. 10 will work, 10 and 12. You will be glad to hear that I don't do this real bad at you. I don't think 12 will work. Wait, 20 and 6. Yep, 20, 20 and 16. So it's going to be 20 and 16, which means the width is going to be 20. Okay, or 16. So then you would have to plug that in. And so these will actually be 20 by 16. Okay, which they just want the length of the longer side, which is 20. Yeah. I did, I know on the test I try to make the numbers a lot easier for you to deal with. You won't take as long trying to find factors. Yeah. All right, so any questions of any of those that we hit at this point? Which one? For the, for the what? Uh, one before the which one? The one right before the Gaussian one? Or the Gaussian one? Or this one? The multiplication? Okay. So, okay. So, easiest way probably is if this is A, B, C, and D. Okay, and you're multiplying it times E, F, G, and H. Okay, when you're trying to multiply them, okay, the way you find each element, and this is a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2, you take the back numbers, front number and the back number, that means your answer is going to be a 2 by 2, which means it's going to have four elements. Okay, and to get those elements, you're going to take row 1 times column 1. Okay, so the first element is going to be row 1 times column 1. And the way you do it is A times the E, okay, plus B times the G. So you multiply these two together, you multiply these two together, and you add them up. To get this element, you're going to take row 2 times column 1. So it's going to be the C times the E plus the D times the G, whatever those numbers are. Okay. 
So if you look, this was row 2 times column 1. That means this element is going to be row 1 times column 2. And this one's going to be row 2 times column 2. And you take the elements in each of them and add them up. Okay? So try that. And again, I have some more in the notes that you can actually go back and look at. Okay? In fact, I probably have an even longer one in the notes. So, All right. So, this one. Okay? This one asks you to find the sum of two numbers is 4, and the difference of their squares is 64. So we have two numbers. We'll say x and y. The sum of them is 4, and the difference of their squares is 64. x squared minus y squared has to be 64. All right, so you're gonna, in this case, you still have a system, okay? And this is asking you to do two different things with it, your answers, okay? So you're looking at trying to figure out some way, since this is a circle, and, or not a circle, um, it's actually a hyperbola, but they're not both linear, so you can't do substitution, or you can't do um, elimination or addition on it you can't just square everything that won't work so you have to actually do substitution and you would probably want to do like x is equal to uh, 4 minus y maybe okay and you could put that into here if you wanted to again there's different methods you can go with it but here you would square it 4 minus y all squared minus y squared is equal to 64 if you multiply this out, that should give you 16 minus 8y plus y squared minus y squared. Okay, that's this is equal to this right here. Okay, and then the y squares nicely cancel out. 16 minus 8y is equal to 64. So I subtract the 16. And so that's going to be 64 minus 16. Uh, I can't do that today. 48. So y is going to be a negative 6. Okay. So if y is a negative 6, that would mean x is that in here x minus 6 is equal to 4 x is 10 all right so in this case the solution these have is 10 comma negative 6 now I answer the questions what is the product of the two solutions well if I multiply those together I get negative 60 what is the number if you take the smaller value of the solutions and subtract by 3 well which one is the smaller value is the negative 6. Subtract that by 3, I get negative 9. So that's why this. And this just gives you a couple different ways we can ask questions. Okay, so you want to make sure you're aware of that. Okay. Um, next question. This is a determinant. Now this is very simple. Okay. And I showed these on your notes. If I take the determinant of a 2 by 2, you just cross multiply a times d minus b times c and that will give you your determinant. Now in this problem they're telling you the determinant is 9. So if I cross multiply 3 times negative 1 minus 2 times x should equal 9. They want you to solve for an x. Okay. Well this is negative 3. Okay. At the 3 to both sides, that's 12, and so x is negative 6. So it's just asking you to use the rule for a determinant there. Alright, so that's the formula for a 2 by 2 determinant. Now we, uh, there is a 3 by 3 determinant um, in your notes also and shows you how to do a 3 by 3, and I, I like the diagonal method. Okay, I don't think we asked you that on the test though, it's going to be a 2 by 2. Okay, 
This one is, they're asking you to take matrix C minus matrix A plus matrix B, okay? Which means, okay, um, you first have to check, are they all the same size? Because they'd all have to be the same size, okay? And so you have to do it in the order. So it's going to be this matrix, and I don't want to spend, that's C, minus A, and then plus B. And you're just, you're using each element as you go. And if you set that up, okay, and you start dealing with these, your first element should be 3 minus 5 plus a negative 4. 3 minus 5 plus a negative 4, which would be negative 2, which should be a negative 6 total. Okay? And if you look at these answers, and if you show me that much work that you can match this up, and this is the only one that has an element at negative 6 right here, that one has to be the answer. Okay? I would definitely try and find my answer before I dealt with the radicals. That's just me. Okay, and you show me some work, I'm going to be good with that. Okay, until you can find that answer. Okay. Um, so these last two. Okay, let me hit these last two, then I'll take some questions. Okay. Um, so this is just one more system. Okay. And so it's asking you to find the system between here and here. It says find the sum of the y-coordinates of the solution. So we only need to find the y-coordinates. So I'm probably going to have to have two here. So you can solve this for either way. Probably x is equal to 4 minus y again. Okay. So what you would need to do is plug that in everywhere. It's going to be squared. Minus 4 times 4 minus y times y plus 4y squared is equal to 1. Okay, so this is going to be 16 minus 8y plus y squared. Distribute the negative 4, that's going to be negative 16 plus 4y plus 4y squared is equal to 1. Okay, so play some game with this. 16s are going to cancel each other out. That's nice. Uh, that's going to be negative 4y plus 5y squared is equal to 1. So that's going to be 5y squared minus 4y minus 1. Okay. So I need to... I'm solving for y. That's a good thing because I want my y coordinates. So that worked out well. Uh, let's see here. How about we do this? Y, whoops. Let's use our new method. Y and Y. I need factors of negative 5 that add up to negative 4. Negative 5 plus 1. Put a negative a 5 underneath those. So I'm going to get Y minus 1 times Y plus 1 fifth, which means Y is 1 and Y is negative 1 fifth. Okay, and they want you to find the sum of those y values, so 1 plus a negative 1 fifth. So wouldn't that be 5 over 5? That would be, what, negative 4 fifths? Four fifths, I don't see that answer. They got 8 thirds. Why do they have 8 thirds? All right, so I'm rushing through this. I would not do this when I take it. Anybody see if I made an error somewhere? Did I? Let me see here. I was rushing through it because I'm running out of time here. All right, so this is why. Do what? Y squared. 
Aha, this one here. Didn't I? So this would be this would be all times that. So this should have been a Y. Ah, crap. You were right. That's what happens when you rush, right? Because that misses all that up. And I didn't even think about it because it was factoring so nice and pretty for us. So this would have been a Y. So that would not have canceled each other out. So let's start that up again. This is going to be 16 minus 8Y plus Y squared minus 16Y plus 4Y squared. This would be 16. That would be 4y, and then all times y. So that'd be a y. That'd be y. Yep. Is equal to 1. That'd be another 4y squared. Sorry. Thought I wrote it. So that's going to be yeah, 15 minus 24y plus 9y squared yeah tell I didn't write this divide everything by 3 now see if it works that's 15 factors of 15 that add up to 8 would be 5 and 3 minus 5 minus 3 divide both of those by 3 there we go that looks better so y is going to be 5 thirds and y is going to be 1 so now when I add those together, 5 thirds plus 1, 3 thirds is 8 thirds. Very good, guys. Way to catch it. Okay. Sorry about that. And again, I would not rush if I was taking my own test. But um, last one, suppose that you are solving the system using Gauss method. Obtain the following matrix. Okay. This is asking you what your next step is probably going to be. Okay, now we'll give you the options here. Okay, so it says add 10 times row 2 plus row 3. Okay, if you look at this, I already have, remember your goal is this is Gaussian method. You're trying to get that to look like that. But in Gauss-Jordan, you want reduced reduced um, echelon which looks like this now in this case either way your next step needs to be how do I make that a zero okay well to make that a zero you're wanting to use this one so you got to multiply the 1 by 10 and then add it to this row so your rule is going to be multiply 10 times row 2 and add it to row 3 and that's what they're having you do here um, you you never ever ever want to multiply a row by zero. Okay, um, you could and then adding negative or adding negative ten times row two. If I multiply this by negative ten, that will not cross it out. Okay, and then the seventeen says add seventeen times row two to row one. That would make that a zero. Okay, but you're really only needing to get this one to be zero. Okay, so I probably wouldn't have put that one in there, but that, this is the one they wanted you to have. Okay, because um, that one does, that's a bad ex extractor. Okay, so any other questions with the review? Again, you can go back and do these on your own and plug them in and see if you're right. Okay, you know what the answer is supposed to be, but it'd be good practice for you to try and get to there. Okay. Any other questions?
the third to last question. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off my recording.